Guys, the real estate market here in Utah has been incredibly resilient over the last couple of months. I made a prediction back in January saying that I think that home prices will come down about five to 10% throughout the course of this year. And unfortunately that hasn't happened. Well, I guess I should say maybe it's unfortunate for some people, other people might be happy about that. But to be honest, that's just not what we saw happen. I thought that home prices would come down due to rising interest rates. Back at the beginning of the year, we had interest rates hovering around 6% and everybody was thinking, hey, these are going to 7%, they're going to 8%. And sure enough, that's what they did. However, the housing market has proved to be incredibly resilient during this time. We're going to take a look at some stats here on my computer in just a minute, but interest rates have gone up. Home prices came down just a little bit, but actually rebounded during the spring and summer months. And they've been mostly flat over the last couple of months. So now we're looking forward into the future and trying to decide what's going to happen. We're going to talk about unemployment and the stock market here in this video, because I think these are important things on why the housing market is reacting the way that it's reacting. The reality here, guys, is that there's a lot of money still out there in the market. There's still tons of money floating around. I did hear something recently that some we're around 40% of all the money that was ever printed or has ever been in circulation here in the United States was printed in the last four to five years. Basically, since COVID began, uh, we've seen a massive amount of money get printed and a lot of massive amounts of money be floating out there in the economy. So despite inflation going crazy and despite um, things being so incredibly expensive, there's still a lot of money out there and people are still purchasing homes. They're still paying the interest on the homes and uh, they're still going through this process. So let's jump in my computer here and take a look at this. As we do that, guys, my name is Cody Steck, your favorite Utah real. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate here in Utah, please reach out to me, call, text, or email anytime. My information is here on the screen and drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic and what you think is going on in the housing market here in Utah. So as I mentioned, um, here in 2023, back at the beginning of the year, we had interest rates around the low 6% for the month of January, and everybody was expecting them to climb, which sure enough, they did. By March, we hit 7%, came back down a little bit, and then basically from April through October, we climbed from about uh, you know low 6% range, hitting 8% here in October. And over the last couple of months, they've come down just a little bit here, sitting at uh, you know low 7% range. So uh, you can kind of see how that graph has changed over here. It does not compare back to you know early 2022 when rates were at like like 3.5%, right? It's crazy. Um, some things that are propping the market up right now are going to be the unemployment rates that we're seeing, especially here in Utah. Unemployment is still very low, which means people still have their jobs. They're still making money. And if they already own a home, they're able to continue making payments on that home. If they don't own a home, well, you know, maybe they're buying a home, right? Not everybody is in a position where they can't buy or don't want to buy. There are still lots of people buying homes in this market. And I'll show you that here in just a second. Utah actually ranks number eight here on the list. We're tied with Virginia and Rhode Island, but we're ranked number eight here on the list at 2.7% unemployment rate, uh, which is great. That means we're in the top 20% uh, of all states across the country compared to other areas. A lot of them are seeing three to 3.9% 3 uh, here. Uh, and we've even got a couple of country or excuse me, states uh, that are sitting in the 4% Nevada at 5.4% ranks last on the list here. Um, and this is as of October, 2023. So an un unemployment here in Utah, especially is very low. People still have their jobs. They don't have to sell their home and they're in a very good position. Let's take a look at the number of home sales that have actually happened during this time. And then we're going to talk a little bit about why I think the market is so strong. Wrong. Uh, the number of home sales, this second column here, you can see that our search criteria is the entire state. This is everything that's happening on market. This doesn't include off market, which believe it or not, there are hundreds of home sales that happen off the market every single month. This is people, you know, maybe you've got mom selling to, to uh, their son. Maybe you've got a dad selling to his daughter. You've got a brother selling a home to his brother, or you've just got a lot of off market deals. A lot of investors deal with off market properties every single day. I see a lot of those deals. Um, and so there's a lot of property changing hands that never hits this information information right here on our MLS system. This is the most comprehensive data set we've got, but it doesn't include everything. Um, so for the month of uh, you know January, this count right here, this is the number of home sales that we saw. January, we had 2,000 sales, 2,500, 3,300, 3,000, 3,500, 3,500. You can see the number of sales that are happening each month and it fluctuates. You know, Usually uh, we're much higher than that. Back in 2021 and 2022, we were around three to 4,000. And this year we've been roughly, you know, around 3000 flat, uh, plus or minus a little bit, depending on the month. So home sales, yes, they are down, but there's still thousands of people selling homes every month and thousands of people buying homes every month, especially when you include the off market stuff. This is, uh, you know, there's going to be at least another 20 to 40% additional home sales that happen every single month. That's not included here in this set and home prices have been pretty resilient, right? January, we did see low numbers at 455. We started to climb going into spring 465, 480, 475, 490 and then we hit 500 again here in June. 
uh, well, $4.99, uh, July, August, September, October have all been mostly steady. We've been hovering around, you know, this 490 to 500 mark since May. So May, we're at 490 in November, still at 490, right? So the last six months, home prices really haven't budged despite these interest rates climbing during that time. Let's take a look at some cash buyer info. This is a, um, you know, quick little graph that I put together here. I thought this was very relevant information because like I said earlier, there's still a ton of money floating around in the market. I think that a lot of people are seeing the headlines. They're seeing these, you know, news articles that say, oh, nobody can afford homes. People can't afford it. And yes, it is true that home affordability is at all time lows. Um, it's very difficult to purchase a home, but there's still lots of people buying homes, lots of people selling homes. And a lot of those people are paying cash. Take a look at this graph here. I took the number of sales that have happened between January and November. I looked at Davis County, Weber County, Salt Lake County, Utah County, Summit County, and Wasatch County. This basically makes up the entire northern uh, portion of the state. Um, there will be some smaller areas outside of this that are not included, such as like Logan. Um, but for the sake of this video, I basically just included the massive uh, metro population. This makes up about 80% of the state's population in these counties right here. So uh, taking a look at this, cash purchases between 100,000 and 500,000. We had 12,744 total home sales with 1,765 uh, cash purchases. This makes up 14% of the market. Oh, we're just gonna round this off, right? 500K to a million, 10,000 total home sales, 1,700 cash purchases as well, makes up 15.8%. 1 to 2 million, especially in this luxury market. I grouped this out because 1 to 2 million, yes, it's definitely considered luxury, um, but there's still quite a bit of home sales that happen in this. And then everything over 2 million is going to be considered, you know, kind of an anomaly. Uh, those are just a totally different home uh, market, right? So uh, 1 to 2 million, we had 1,767 home sales, 600 of which were cash, which makes up roughly 34% of the total market. And look at this homes above $2 million. 57.7% of the market was a cash purchase. This means that even people who are, um, you know, a lot of times people who are financing these uh, properties still have the option to pay cash, right? People have the money to do this. This is uh, going to be traditionally older people who maybe have sold a home and have the cash to purchase the next one, or they've got a business or they've just saved up or the stock market's doing really well, which it is. We're going to talk about that, um, you know, and they've got this money. They're able to pay cash, even millions of dollars. People are purchasing cash. And this is here in Utah, right? You know, this is not California. This is not New York. This is not Miami um, that are traditionally much more, um, you know, well-known global areas. Uh, this is Salt Lake City, right? So across the board, properties over 2 million, 58% roughly of home sales are happening with cash. And I'd, I'd even argue that probably 80 to 90% of the people who are getting financing um, would be able to pay cash if they wanted to, but they just finance so they can keep the cash in the pocket. The reason why I think this is happening is largely due to the strength of the stock market. Inflation has been cooling. Unemployment is low. The market is actually looking like it might be doing pretty well. The economy looks like it's doing pretty well. It's very resilient as of the last couple of months um, and even the last couple of years. But take a look at the NASDAQ over this time. This NASDAQ is basically, a, if you don't know, it's a stock market index that includes almost all stocks listed on the uh, stock exchange, along with the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. It is one of the three most followed stock market indices. Let's actually pull up the S&P 500 as well. So if we take a look at this um, over the last year, let's take a look at NASDAQ first. Uh, the S or excuse me, the NASDAQ during this time, uh, back at the end of 2022, we're around 10,300. Now we're at 14,300. Now, if these numbers don't make any sense to you, don't worry. The important thing of this video here is to understand that, hey, this number is, go you know, this graph is going up. Um, that's the important thing to know here. If we take a look at the S&P 500, same exact story. It's basically the same exact graph that you see here. Um, but, you know, Inter, uh, the, these numbers you know, went up, the stock market's doing well, really well. There's still a lot of um, money out there in the market. And when people see the uh, strength of the stock market, they will pull money out of the stock market or just even out of their savings account to be able to purchase real estate during this time. Uh, people see that, hey, my retirement account's doing pretty good. My investment account's doing pretty good. People feel pretty confident about the uh, economy and what's going on. And they go out there and they purchase real estate. A lot of them are using cash because now interest rates are so high. It makes sense to do that. Um, but still people are financing, still people are buying and selling homes. And um, you know that's what's happening in the market. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I want to be your trusted real estate resource when it comes to buying, selling, or investing in real estate here in Utah. If you're looking to do any of those things or relocate here to the area, please reach out to me. I've had hundreds of people reach out from videos just like this, and I absolutely love hearing from you guys. So please call, text, or email anytime. Please reach out to me. My information is here on the screen, and you'll find it in the description box below. Leave a comment on this info before you leave. And with that said, guys, we'll catch you in the next video. Talk to you soon.